So it's no secret that a few of my favorite mods for my new motorcycles are tires, luggage, and windshields. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about on my 2024 Africa Twin Adventure Sport is the windshield. You see, we have the stock one installed here right now, but what we're going to be taking a look at today are the WS, WRS windshields. We also taking a look at these on the Transalp. So if you're interested in that as well, go check them out. But the stock windshield on the Africa Twin for touring, especially the adventure sport, it's quite minimalistic. But Holy smokes, it is incredibly hot today that I might just want to take off the windshield completely. But first off, let me go ahead and give you a couple measurements compared to the stock, to the Touring, and then the Capinord. But what I'd like to do is actually hit the road. We're going to do a back road and then get on some highway, get some speeds, and actually get a test from all of them from the stock to the Touring and the Capinord. And I'm actually going to talk about the differences as we are riding so we can actually get a true feedback and see if these WRS windshields are beneficial over the stock. One. So kicking it off with the stock windshield. We have this in the low position and by the way on the bike I have this seat in the low position as well. I'm right at six feet just so you got a vibe of again my positioning on the bike and just riding back roads here 40 miles an hour in the low position the stock windshield it, it does pretty nice. I feel the wind coming right over here onto my arms not really beating me up at low speeds and then I got the air coming into my helmet right on my top vent and everything. Uh, and again, it's taking all that air off my chest. Again, with my seat in a low position, it puts me into the bike a little bit more, which is what I prefer. But for back roads and just cruising around, this is perfectly fine. Now, I want to also test this in the high position, which, of course, you know you need two hands to adjust this. Gosh, I wish they would make it just one uh, adjustable bit. But wow, let me tell you, just putting this in the high position, it pretty much took all of that air off of my face. Like, I got to crack my visor right now because my glasses are starting to fog up because I got no airflow coming in. And there is really no air up here into my helmet. In the high position here, up around, let's get to that 45-ish miles an hour. I feel a whole lot more air on my wind still or on my arms. Still hit me in the same spot right over here by my elbow, but I got a whole lot more. You can tell it's a bigger gust. And what's happening here is now that it's in a high position, you can see we have this gap right here. So I got this air on the top, which is cresting right over the top of my helmet. Like I'm almost not even getting any air in my uh, upper vent on the top of the helmets. Hence the reason I had to crack my visor. It gets spicy and again, my glasses are fogging. So I'm still getting my arms beat up as well, but I have a bigger gust of wind because that opening is so much more. Now on the base Africa Twin, you're gonna notice a different. The windshield doesn't cut in like that. It comes out because these little fairings or whatever on the front are not on the base twin. It's just down there and then the windshield comes out and covers uh, that little bit there. So uh, what I'm concerned about is will the base Africa Twin windshields fit on these and kind of cut out that bit right there which is again kind of coming in cutting on my arms in the high position because this is what I'd want to use if I was touring. And talking about touring in the high position I think it's doable but I think for long distance, high speed highway testing, which we're about to do here in a second, well, the high speed, not the long distance so much, but I think it's gonna fatigue my arms. My gear is gonna be flapping around. It's just gonna get annoying after a while. Now, the other thing I wanna mention about the windshield in the high position is visibility. Again, with me being right at six feet, seat in a low position, I am not looking through the windshield. It's pretty much spot on through my vision. If I stretch my arm out, my arm's going up just a pinch. But again, I can see over it perfectly fine. I can see what's coming up there. I would say if you're a little bit shorter, if I take a few inches off, you know, maybe three or four inches, it's cutting right in between at the high position. And this is how I do not like riding, where I see a little bit of the road, a little bit through there, and then I got that little bit of warping up at the top. I do not like when windshields do that. So I would say, again, if you're a little bit shorter in that high position, it's going to be pretty darn annoying. So you might want to go down to like, say, the third notch or so. And that's pretty much that sweet spot that I usually keep the windshield in. 
is again that third position even when I'm cruising around and it's pretty good whenever I jump on you know the highway doing more higher speed stuff it just pretty much works out in all the situations hopefully this rain doesn't interfere our filming here but anyways we're in a low position right now and wow hopefully you guys can still hear me it is incredibly gusty I'm gonna put on cruise control at 65 and uh, you know I don't want to say I'm getting beat up but I feel it hitting the side of my helmet a little bit here not too bad on my arms with it low because it's preventing that gap from opening up but I feel myself having to yell right now so let's go on and bring it up to the high position um you know significantly different what I feel now is this air that was beating up my arms it's it's not too bad on the highway it's kind of just flowing through but I feel like this is now I mean I can almost feel it it's coming up right here on the side of my helmet and up here it's coming over my helmet so it's almost like engulfing me in I don't want to say I'm getting all this crazy buffeting and it's bouncing me around because that's not what's happening here but uh, you know it's not comfortable I almost feel it beating around the top of my head it's almost jarring just the top of my head which is kind of annoying are we getting any air that's just gonna break up that air right there but you know this stock windshield it does the job but it doesn't do the job great again we all know the adventure sport is built more for touring and I just don't feel like this is gonna do our touring job well it's not gonna make that ride pleasant we're always going to be like, ah, it's a little bit too much on my arms. Oh, it's beating up my helmet a little bit. Now, if you're taking your bike and just cruising around doing a couple hours here and there, yeah, it's going to be perfectly fine. But if you want to hit the road, I'm going to recommend we swap this out. And now for the WRS Touring Windshield. And I really like this one. Just the looks and everything, it goes pretty smooth with the bike. And, you know, I actually went on my long road trip, my first tour with this bike, up to Tennessee, uh, North Carolina. It was about 1,400 miles total, and this is the windshield I used. So I can tell you, for touring, it definitely did the job. And I'll tell you right now, just going around that 40, 45 miles per hour, at the low position we're at right now, seat and everything still the same. I get air on my arm still, but it's more or less down here. So before it was right up here on the elbow, right on that crease now it's like right below it and it's not necessarily beating it up it's just kind of flowing but again i do still feel it on my arm so it's nice to get a little bit of that airflow but not that fatiguing constant kind of slapping type of air so now at those steady speeds just rolling here i do hear in the low position the air cresting across the side of my helmet because this does slope down right here as you can see and when i take my hand that air comes pretty much right on the side. You know, I changed my route up because of the rain, but now it looks like it's coming this way. Like, what the heck? I just can't avoid it today. Uh, I might have to change my route up again. I was going the opposite way and it was absolutely downpouring, but uh, I don't know. I look at the radar and there's nothing out there. We got rain coming later, but I don't know. You can never trust that stuff, you know? So anyways, back to the windshield right like this again it's coming right by the side of my helmet and I catch myself talking louder right now into the camera and on the top it's going right I would say pretty much right in line with the vent of the helmet on the top right there so it is still a little bit noisy I'm getting a really nice amount of airflow not as much as the stock one because it comes out more helping with the arms and it comes up a little bit taller in the top so it's not as air flowy as the stock but again you're still getting enough airflow so I'm gonna keep on going with this route here and um, hopefully this rain doesn't catch us <laughs> I'm probably gonna have to turn around and let it chase me back again and we'll have to pick a different route but what I want to do here is bring this windshield up to the high position Oh wow, 
it just pretty much completely took the air off my head and I'm not getting any on the side or the top I mean I got some air flow but like that sound of wind beating up on your helmet is gone completely right when I popped it up gone but I will tell you it opened up these little gaps here and now the wind is back here on my elbow and I feel it beating up my arms again that I just do not like hence why I said in the stock windshield I was curious if the base Africa twin windshields will work on the adventure sport because it will fill in those gaps I asked WRS they said no but I honestly think they might I could be wrong I don't know maybe we'll have to try that one but in the high position here as well I would say it's borderline right there in my view I can see over it perfectly you can see my arm stretched out is a little bit higher up than the stock and this is pretty much where I would want it cut off right if in in the high position here and this is what I used it on when I rode the highway I think it's like I-75 whatever and I was on the highway for a while and I put it up like this I mean it was pretty darn comfortable minus again beating up on my arms right here but as far as on the helmet pretty nice good the visual it's right at that peak limit with me being at six feet in the seat in the low position if I put the seat in the high position I'll be pretty good I'll kind of be up here and it'll be perfect but then I'm gonna get more wind on my head as well but if you're shorter again you take off a few inches you're gonna be looking straight through this windshield but the cool thing as I'm looking straight through the windshield hopefully you guys can see the same view as me I'm not getting any warping the only warping is really over here where the screws go in but looking straight forward it's pretty darn natural and it looks really really good so uh, if you're looking through this windshield I don't think it's gonna be bad especially if you're in the rain or something and man just sitting like this it removed all of the wind on my helmet oh man this is how I like riding not in this position but again with uh, no noise and that crazy sound on long tours long highway rides you know but again coming back up it's definitely passable in the high position for back road riding and I will tell you I'm getting beat up just about as much I don't want to say beat up because I you know this is tough I feel it going over my arms for sure because it's coming out a little bit wider but my helmet I'm getting noise on the side I'm getting a little bit of bobble up at the top nothing drastic by any means you probably catch me talking a bit louder right now because there's a lot of noise but if I'm on the highway going higher speeds I'm gonna want to take this windshield and put it in a high position and that does it right there Wow that totally just transformed the comfort of this bike again unfortunately the air is coming down here on the lower part of my arms now because that's open which is again a bit of a stinker but as far as the top of the helmet I'm not getting no bobbling no buffeting the air is cresting I would say maybe half an inch over the top of my vent so if I want a good piece of air which is what I had to do on my long road trip I just did with this windscreen I caught myself having to do this kind of lean out get some air real quick and just to cool off but I can lift my visor up like this I'm sure you guys are getting a whole lot more wind and road noise but I can lift my visor up like this and my face isn't getting beat up right now that's what I love so bam I lean over cool off real quick good to go and I can ride with my visor up without feeling fatigued but again you do get that road noise so I'm probably you know hollering into the camera mic right now but this is almost perfect for touring I can see over perfectly fine perfectly comfortable I would say my only downfall is I do feel that wind that's coming right here and hitting my arms so we got that gap there I know Honda makes the deals for this I'm not sure if they fit the new adventure sport because this is different than the old one so we'll have to see about that but that's only going to cut out this air down here it's not going to cut this out 
this is still again an issue and now for our last windshield being the Capnor, the big mama jama here this is the biggest out of the bunch but it honestly looks pretty good on this bike it doesn't look like that grandpa windshield you'd expect being the bigger one and right now going around 40 45 miles an hour on the back roads all i have is clean air like this is nice as far as my arms it is still right down here it is a little bit wider but i have a little bit of air coming right down here so it's a little bit lower remember we started here went to here and now we're down to here and uh man on my helmet right now this is nice i'm getting a little bit on the sides nothing excessive like i don't got that crazy wind noise let me see as far as the top this is in the low position by the way not sure if i mentioned that but right here it's rolling right to the top of my helmet right where it would kind of roll over and the air is rolling right up into my vent and it's man this is real nice because i feel that air going through that vent and it's almost like dispersing back through my neck it's so weird but man that is super nice and one thing i do notice and i'm not sure if you guys can see it in the camera but it's a little bit more bouncy up at the top if you guys can see and of course that's because it's a longer windshield but uh i don't know will that get annoying after a while or is that just the road i'm on it almost bounces like as much as the mirror yeah see that can get pretty annoying i wish it was stable like that but again we got a taller windscreen so maybe that's just the reason it is thicker but i, I don't know we'll have to see on the highway if it does that as well but talking about again my height sitting on the bike still low position i can see over this perfectly fine this is a uh, pretty manageable here and this is the low position i think anything higher again i wouldn't want to use it off road and it would probably block a little bit too much but right now like again i can see in front of me perfectly fine again that air is coming right up to my vent up there this is a really really nice position the only thing i can complain about again is how much it's bouncing around that's kind of annoying and you know even in the low position with my visor open as you're hearing a whole lot more air and bike noise this is pretty manageable i'm not getting crazy beat up i got i got a little bit coming in and i feel a little bit but it's nothing excessive by any means i definitely got a nice breeze coming right at my brow line really nice right there but let me go on and close this visor back up and let's bring this windshield into the high position. Whew. Wow. Okay. I am looking through this first bit of the windshield up there, that inch and a half, give or take. Whenever I'm turning, I'm looking over this crest and I don't like that. Uh, I just don't because like even right now, like if I sit with better posture, I catch myself almost looking over it and I'm looking really far ahead, which yeah when you're on a bike you want to be looking far ahead knowing what's out there but like right there with that divot in the road i caught myself looking down and i'm getting this split and, and that's something i'm not a fan of right i like okay i can see over and i can see what's coming up but if i got to look over to here i don't want to break into a different uh, field of view a little bit of warping if that makes sense you know so this is i would say this is like straight long shot touring you're kind of just going and you don't really need to break your vision line a whole lot that's where i would recommend this high position here on uh you know back roads i, I honestly wouldn't use it in a high position on back roads maybe if it was raining it'd probably block the rain pretty good it doesn't really like swoop up it just kind of swoops back so i don't know if the rain would come down into our visor or not but if i come down here like this is nice this is real nice it's taking a lot of air off my uh arms so again if you're shorter you got a true view throughout this entire windshield if you're give or take two three inches shorter you're gonna really like this for long tours to cut all of that wind down i think that'll be pretty nice with this windshield but for me in the high position on back roads it's ah, you know I, I don't i don't like this i don't like having my vision broken I feel myself panning way too much instead of focusing on the road. Now let's go ahead and get the highway test of the Capinord here. We'll get up to our speed limit of 65. Okay, a little bit over. Let's get back down to what we were doing for all the other ones. Stay at 67. And 
I'll tell you what, in the low position, the air is still hitting my arms, but it feels like a better flow. It's not like coming in whack right into my arms. It's kind of flowing across my arms, which I do really like because it's definitely closing off that gap more. And it's coming out here where this air is again passing by me. So I really like this, but um, I am getting a little bit of bobble on the top of my helmet. It's almost like that slight bit, kind of like that, you know what I mean? Nothing excessive by any means, but I think for long rides, that would get pretty annoying um, as far as that little bit of bobble, and I do get some noise. But let's go on and test it in that high position on the highway. Okay, this is interesting. This is a little bit different than uh, the other ones. Number one, I feel like I'm trying to look down and through it. This is a really weird, this is kind of a mixture here. It's like it's doing some things I like and some things I don't like. Like now I feel that air, it's blocking so much off over here because it's coming out further. So I'm feeling this come in a little bit more, if that makes sense. Like again, this was shorter, so these are kind of combining together. When now I feel like this is doing its own thing and this is really coming in and I'm getting a lot of that in on my neck, which is real strange. Again, right when I lifted it up, I felt my shirt dance around a whole lot more on my neck right there, lifting it up. And as far as the top of my helmet, uh, I don't know if I want to say I'm getting that bobble on the top because it's definitely not beating around my head a whole lot more but I do feel it which is strange because it's up top and it's clear as day passing over my helmet by an inch easily so that's weird I don't know if it's a combination of this coming in and that over there I don't know I, I, I don't, I'm not you know this high windshield position I'm not really liking with the Capinord. If I bring it down, yeah, now it's even more. I'm feeling it kind of bobbing me just a little bit more. It's not excessive, but I feel a little bit more. Let me go down to the third position and see if we can get something better here. By the way, as far as adjusting the Africa Twin windshield on the road, it's really push one and push one down to lock it. It's not going to like mess anything up but push one whole side down till it locks and then do the other side a whole lot easier um right yeah now i'm getting too much wind i'm getting too much wind for touring and i wouldn't want to do this on the highway so this third position was really nice on the back roads but touring this is excessive and i'm getting too much air i just want to try just for grins and giggles the lowest position and see how it is you know, it's flowing across me really good right now. I'm not getting beat up. I'm not getting any of that banging on the top or on the sides. It's really smooth air coming all the way around me. Those are closed off on the side. Top is coming up to my vent. I'm getting really nice clean air here, but it's noisy, right? I'm hearing all that noise come around me. And if I'm riding on the highway for four or five hours, I'm not going to want to hear that, right? I'm going to want that closed off, and I'm going to want to lean over to get my air. I don't want to hear that constant wishing of the air going across. So, uh, you know, I was really looking forward to this one, but I think this is going to be a bust. There's too many cons that outweigh the pros on the Capinord in my personal opinion. So now that we tested all three windshields, I wanna talk about my results here. And coming right off of the Capinor, the biggest one, that one's probably the biggest heartbreak for me because I was really looking forward to something that would kind of give me my enclosed bubble, you know, whenever I'm doing long tour. And if you're buying the Adventure Sport Africa Twin, that's probably what the majority of us plan to do with it, is long road trips. And I don't like that 
wind really beating up my ears and beating up my arms and stuff. I want that smooth bubble while I'm riding, then I want to be able to drop it down whenever I want some of that fresh air. I get on some back roads, which is what I thought I would get with that. But there were too many faults with this one. The bobbling of it, the bouncing around of the screen, and looking through it at my height. I think if you're taller than me, if you're above six feet, that's where the cap nord would come into play. Let, let me put that out there. But again, talking about my test results right at six feet low height uh, for the seat, it just didn't work out for me. Now, coming over to the stock one, that windshield over here, I just think has to be replaced. It just, it doesn't do it with a big touring bike. It's just not doing the job for me. Again, there's too much air happening. It's great if you're riding back roads, but again, with a big touring bike like this, I don't think many of us are gonna be focusing on back roads. We're gonna be able to wanna hit those highways. And that's where the WRS touring screen really comes into play and suited me pretty darn good. It just was a mixture of the Capinord and the stock windscreen just in that nice form factor. It looked really good, sleek and clean on it and it didn't bounce around. Now, unfortunately with every single windshield on this bike, of course you noticed we had that little gap right here whenever we raised it up and that is something I do not like. And what I think we need is something like this. This is a windshield I had on my previous Africa Twin. You can see the holes line up. This is NC, I forget the company name of this, but I cut it down actually. Um, it looks goofy. I don't like the way this one looks. You can see it cuts off some of the graphics there because it's black, but look at it on the side, it clears off that gap. And that is exactly what the base Africa Twin windshields from WRS do. They actually come out here. Now, what I'm concerned about is do they come in and roll in? Because then it will hit those little fairings right there. I'm not too sure about that, but if they come out straight across and still be clear, that would be absolutely perfect because it would prevent Again, any of that wind beat up right there. And any of that are thinking, just those little uh, covers that go over here on the Africa Twin, that just takes off that wind down here, not up there. So I still think this is going to be an issue. So I think, you know, for me right now, it's going to be the touring windscreen, but I'm still gonna be out searching for that solution that's gonna prevent or fill in that gap whenever I raise it up to hit the highway. So let me know what you think about these windshields down in the comment. Will you be changing your windshield on your Africa Twin, whether that be a base or an adventure sport? You all know me, windshields are a mod. I love changing just right along with tires and luggage because it truly transforms Again, that riding experience on the bike, definitely with the tires and then a windshield. Again, creating that bubble. And that's what I like is my bubble when I go on long tours. So again, let me know what you guys think of these and if you're changing yours and which one you're going with. I'd love to hear that down in the comments. But all in all, I hope this video was able to help you out one way or another. And if it was, please hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope to catch you on the next adventure. Bye now.